economic recession. Every Muslim who has wealth exceeding a specific minimum, a level known as Nasab, and who maintains the wealth for more than one lunar year is obligated to give Zakah. Zakah is given on an annual basis based on the Islamic lunar calendar and is not based on the western calendar which is 11 days longer than its counterpart. The Nisab is the specific amount of wealth that a Muslim must possess before being required to pay zakah. One is obligated to pay zakah if what they possess is equal to or more than the equivalent to 3 ounces of gold or its value in cash or trade goods. Zakah must be paid for gold and silver currency, cash, agricultural produce such as date farms, livestock, rent income, and business commodities such as inventory stock in a shop warehouse. Islam requires Muslims to pay an annual contribution of 2.5% of the wealth and liquid assets that they have accrued and held for over the course of one lunar year. Zakat is calculated on the person's earned net balance, the amount which remains after paying all the other necessary expenses. Zakat is not an income tax, rather the amount to do is based on what a Muslim has saved and held for an entire year, and not on their income level. Zakat is not paid from the pool of funds used for debt repayment, or for the necessary living expenses such as food, water, shelter, clothing, and transportation. The recipients of Zakat are the poor, the needy individuals who will live in turmoil, those who have accumulated much debt captives, the zakat administrators, and more recipients. Scholars state that the poor and the impoverished are the most important categories of people eligible to receive zakat. The purpose of zakat is to help those who cannot help themselves. Zakat can be given to an individual's extended family. However, one may not give this specific amount to parents or children, as one is already obligated to support them. When one gives zakat in this world, he or she is really helping themselves, as they are transferring needed goodwill from their worldly life to their afterlife, which is the best investment one can make. When one gives someone in need, he shouldn't think of the gesture as a favor, rather he is giving to God. The one giving is more in need of the beggar than the beggar is in need of him. Whereas the beggar is in need of only money, the giver is in need of the Almighty's forgiveness. Do they not know that it is Allah who accepts repentance from his servants and receives charities, and that it is Allah who is accepting of repentance, the merciful? The benefits of giving in charity are many and varied. Amongst the benefits is the pleasure that God expresses to the one who gives. Zakat is known to extinguish the wrath that Allah may hold for one who gives. Giving zakat also protects one from the punishment of the hellfire. The act of giving to the needy awakens the soul and initiates genuine concern and sympathy for the well-being of the unprivileged and others. It is recommended to give charity in secrecy to ensure that one is giving for the right, pure reason of pleasing God, and not to receive praise or to boast before others. Both acts would nullify the good deed. However, under certain circumstances, for instance, in the event that one has the intention to encourage others to donate in a similar manner, one may give zakah in public. It's important to note that zakah money needs to be given from an untainted pool of 100% pure and halal funds, not taken from thefts or bribes, nor profits from interest-based loans or from sales of alcohol, pork, drugs, or anything that is prohibited in Islam. God the Almighty is good and pure and only accepts that which is good and pure. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.